Hey there, it's Book Riot contributing editor Sharifa here for another Read Harder Challenge task. My middle grade reading life was basically my best reading life. It represented that first taste of reading independence, not because I wasn't allowed to read whatever I wanted because I was, but because it was around the age I started exploring the library on my own. Turns out I could choose more than one book and I didn't have to compromise on book choice with my bossy older sister, as was always the case at bookstores. At that age I basically thought I was Roald Dahl's Matilda and nothing gave me more pride than to walk out of those library doors with a stack of books that reached above my eye level, which admittedly wasn't very high. I basically reached peak height at age 5. That golden age of my reading life is the reason I'm so excited to wallow in today's task, read a middle grade novel. Can we wallow? Wallow with me. I'm especially excited for the opportunity to explore exciting and new middle grade books like George by Alex Gino. George was born a boy, but she knows she's a girl. She's haunted by the need to reveal her identity and come out as transgender, but is a fourth grader trying to come out to her mother, her older brother, and her best friend, and then facing bullies and stigmas at school, articulating her identity seems an impossibility. But she knows who she is, she has to be herself, and with the help of her best friend she comes up with a plan to do just that. This book was seriously so touching, I am not ashamed to say I cried a little, but it was not an ugly cry, okay it was an ugly cry. I don't want to give away too much about George's experiences because it's a short and quick read, aka easy to spoil, but I just want you to know that it's going to punch you in the heart. My next pick is The Charmed Children of Rookskill Castle by Janet Fox. This is an absolutely perfect rainy day read, so make sure you have plenty of hot chocolate on hand and the good marshmallows, not those cardboard bits. World War II is upon us and the Bateson kids are being sent to Rookskill Castle in Scotland for safekeeping from London's Blitz. Assigned the responsibility of taking care of her two younger siblings, Kat has every intention of getting the three of them through their time at the academy a distant relative's wife set up in the castle. Armed with logic and a chatelaine entrusted to her by her great aunt Margaret who's gone a little daffy with ideas about the magic and power held within the ornament of charms, Kat enters the academy with Robbie, Amelie, and their American companion Peter. But she and the other students quickly learn that the ancient castle and its lady aren't out to provide the sort of protection promised to their parents, and Kat is forced to both question and employ her logic to keep the promise she made to her father before he left on a dangerous and secret mission for the good guys. Moral of the story, if you decide to send your child or you are that child that wants to go to boarding school, double check the fine print on that pamphlet to ensure the school is not haunted. Who was excited about the Wrinkle in Time movie adaptation news? We're of course talking about Madeline Langle's classic tale of the surreal journey of Margaret Murray, kid brother Charles Wallace, and their friend Calvin. Margaret Murray is a bit of a cranky pants, but with good reason. She thinks she's dumb and delinquent, especially compared to her brilliant parents. But Meg's missing father knew Meg and Charles Wallace are highly intelligent, but see the world and come to solutions in their own unique way. He knew they were simply different and developed as such. But their father went missing while engaged in classified work for the government. This must be the Dads on Secret Mission segment. Anyway, Meg is left with longing and self-loathing until she, Charles Wallace, and Calvin are whisked away to Uriel, the third planet of the star Malik, by a Mrs. Watson and a Mrs. Who, who assign them their own mission to find the Murray children's father. Admittedly, after reading this book for a fourth grade assignment, I could only remember the story as a fever dream, so I had to reread it very recently. A cast of spectacular, fantastical characters with funny names, incredible surreal settings, mathematical equations that'll break your brain, Oprah Winfrey, they are all waiting for you, and Madeline Langle's A Wrinkle in Time. My final pick and most recent read is Tang Ha Lai's Listen Slowly. Can we just take a moment to appreciate this beautiful book cover? Okay, that's enough. Moments don't work on video. Mai is a whip-smart 12-year-old surfer girl with a 4.0 GPA. Living in Laguna Beach with her doctor father and lawyer mother, the only care in the world Mai or Mia as her friends know her has, is spending her summer at the beach where she's sure the guy she's crushing on will be hanging. But that dream is ripped away when her parents decide she should go to Vietnam for the first time to help her live-in grandmother through a difficult situation. Mai loves her grandmother, but she doesn't understand the point of getting in touch with her roots, and she doesn't understand how her grandmother could think her husband, who's been missing since the Vietnam War, could still be alive. But when Mai is left alone with her grandmother, and begins to listen to her stories to explore Vietnam and its people, her people, her summer break takes on new meaning. Let me tell you, this book is so funny and clever. It's narrated in first person by Mai and she totally fits the role of the super intelligent, highly snarky 12 year old. 
but she's not that precocious kid with fatiguing Fraser Crane stylings. She's just honest about her feelings, where sometimes she gets that it's important to be there for family, and sometimes she's upset that her big boob best friend might be cozying up to her crush so she can't see past her own problems or wants. And I don't know about you, but I love a book that takes you completely outside of your daily life and environment, and light captures the sights and people of Vietnam so beautifully. Extra points because it reminded me of my massive family and visits to them overseas. That's it for me in middle grade books, until next time!